Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the process of creating and working with blend spaces in the blend space editor. Then I'll explain a common approach for using blend spaces with multi-directional movement and how you can resolve some common blend issues that occur with that use case. Blend spaces are assets where animation sequences can be placed into a one or two dimensional graph at various points called samples. A resulting animation output is then calculated by blending between the points in the graph based on an input coordinate value for each axis. There are two main types of blend space assets in the engine, the blend space and the aim offset. Blend spaces are meant to be used as part of the base animation layer. When placed into an animation graph, they do not have any input pin, only an output pin whereas aim offsets do have an input pin, as they take in an input pose and are meant to be filled with mesh space additive animations. The aim offset node then applies the additive offset from the additive animations to the input pose and outputs a pose with the offset applied. In this video, I'll be focusing on blend spaces and not aim offsets, though much of what I do discuss will carry over and apply to aim offsets as well as the graph structure and settings that we can affect in the blend space editor are the same for both of these asset types. Additionally, blend spaces and aim offsets both have two variants, a one dimensional and two dimensional asset. To create a blend space, I'll right click in the content drawer and under the animation section, I will choose blend space and select the skeleton that I want to associate the new blend space asset with. Now I can give it a name and double click on it to open it in the blend space editor. In the asset details panel on the left side of the editor, we can define the value names and ranges for each axis of the blend space. We can control the amount of grid divisions and whether or not we should snap animations to them when we drag them into the graph. Finally, we have the wrap input option as well. By default, a blend space will clamp any input value given to the range defined in its axis values. Let's say we have a blend space with a minimum axis value of 0 and a maximum axis value of 100. If we then provide an input of 125, that input will be clamped to 100. But if we enable wrap input, that value will be wrapped around to the other side as both the minimum value and maximum value of the axis will be treated as the same point. So the input of 125 will become 25. But 275 would become 75. Negative 25 would become 75. And so on and so forth. It's important to note that when you are using wrap input, you want to ensure that the animations on each end of the axis match each other. Otherwise, you'll run into issues as the engine is going to try to treat these two points as being the exact same, turning the line segment of a blend space into a continuous circle. To add animations into the blend graph, we can click on an asset from a content drawer or the asset browser in the bottom right hand corner of the window, and drag and drop it into the graph. If we hold shift, it will snap to the grid points regardless of whether or not we've enabled the snap to grid option. Now let's talk a bit about interpolation, which is the process that the engine goes through to create the in-between poses between the animation sequences you provide to the blend space. You'll notice a use grid setting that we can enable. This enables grid mode interpolation, which is an older method and it isn't generally recommended to use this one. At least that's what the Unreal Engine documentation says. The main exception being when you wrap the input of an axis. If you're doing that, then you should use grid mode according to the documentation. Otherwise, you'll want to stick to triangulation-based interpolation, which is the engine's default. Now, I don't understand the technical complexities enough to describe to you exactly what triangulation is in the context of blend spaces in Unreal Engine. But I can say that the result of the triangulation process is shown 
through the white lines drawn between the input animation sequence assets. And we can see the result of choosing different triangulation methods by observing different orientations of these connecting lines in the graph. The first method is none, and it aligns all the triangles in the same direction throughout the entire graph. If you are making a symmetrical graph, you should not use this option, as while even if the animations mirror each other and match from one side to another, the blend between them will not because of the relative difference in triangulation. Both radial and tangential triangulation can be used in blend spaces that are mirrored. Additionally, tangential triangulation will cause all the triangles to face outward away from the center of the grid, and radial will cause all of them to face inward towards the center of the grid. When determining the method that is correct for you, you'll just want to try out both and just go with whichever one creates the blends that look best. There's not too much of a science to it. You'll just want to fiddle around until you find the settings that work right for you. Finally, we can control the smoothing time and method for each axis of the blend space. By default, smoothing is disabled, and any wide difference in input value from one frame to the next will be reflected in the blend space and the output pose as it will do an instant transition each frame to the input value which can lead to very jittery results if your input is not being smoothed before it is being passed into a blend space we can enable smoothing in a blend space by adding in some smoothing time and choosing a smoothing mode and then it will essentially move from the previous frame's point in the blend space to the next frame's target point over a period of time, which will introduce a small amount of lag, but will smooth out the transition from one input value to another. This is another case where you'll need to experiment and find the values that work best for your use case and your animations. Now, let's talk about a common use case for blend spaces multi-directional locomotion. Here I have a one-dimensional blend space with four distinct directional animations. One for backwards, one for right-facing movement, one for forward-facing movement, and one for left-facing movement. These are oriented along a value range of negative 180 degrees to positive 180 degrees, where we have the same backward animation at negative 180 and positive 180 and input is wrapped. This value range represents the relative angular offset in degrees between the direction of motion and the facing of the camera. So if there is no offset between the facing of movement and the facing direction of the camera, we walk forward. If there's negative 90 degrees, we strafe left, positive 90, we strafe right, and 180 degrees negative or positive we're moving in direct opposition to our facing, which means that we are strafing backwards. Because these four animations are inside a blend space, we turn what would be four distinct axes of coverage into 360 degrees of coverage. But there's an issue. In a lot of places, the blend looks great. But in a few of them, we start to see some odd behavior where both feet move at the same time, and that's because not all four of these animations are similar. Now, these animations are all part of the same asset pack, so the difference isn't in the style of movement, but rather it's in the technicalities of the movement itself. There are two main metrics you want to be aware of when working with locomotion, movement animations, and blend spaces. The timing between footsteps and the orientation of the character's hips relative to its movement direction. While timing differences between footsteps can be aligned in blend spaces through the use of sync markers, that isn't the case when there's a difference between the hip orientation relative to movement. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we look at this right-facing strafing animation, the hips are facing pretty close to the direction of movement. So this would be referred to as a hips forward into movement animation. But if we now move over to this backwards facing animation that we are blending with the right one in this region of the blend space, well, the hips are now facing directly in opposition to the direction of movement. And as a rule of thumb, 
when you're blending between two animations where the hip facing relative to movement is in opposition, you are not going to get a good blend. In order to solve this, we'll need to create two distinct blend spaces instead of encapsulating all 360 degrees of movement into one. In one blend space, which will need to be a minimum of 180 degrees, we'll have all of the animations where the hips are aligned with the movement direction. So from left through forward to right, we want animations where the hips are aligned with the movement direction. And then in another separate building space, we'll have all our hips backwards relative to movement animations. Again, from left to right, but this time we're working with the other hemisphere, so it's from left to backwards to right. We can then place both these blend spaces into an animation blueprint and toggle between which one we're using at runtime. And because there's overlap with the right and left strafing, we can do a quick toggle and blend from one to another and not remain in the gray zone where the blending is bad between the two different hip orientations for an extended period of time. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, available now for my patrons over on patreon.com forward slash outcast dev school, I'll be getting back to the advanced character locomotion tutorial series. I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for their continued support, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.